Your mood dictates your success. Absolutely. Welcome back to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I am Matt Smith. I'm your host of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I am the founder of this movement. This movement is to give back to the industry that has given so much to me and my family. So I'm glad to have you guys here. In this episode, we're very excited to share. We think it's very relevant, very time sensitive for what is going on in today's marketplace. In this episode, we are going to talk about the number one lever that dictates your success in real estate. I'm going to say that again. The number one lever that dictates your success in real estate, especially in today's marketplace. So you're going to want to stay tuned for this one. And joining me today, I've got a couple special guests. As always, I've got Colin. He's behind the camera today. What's going on, everybody? I'm excited for this topic. It's going to be gold. Colin is having a great hair day. Too bad you can't see it. Um, <laughs> but Colin's here as always. And then we also have a special guest, Mike Salazar, our COO of our company at Matt Smith Real Estate Group. Sal, welcome. For, welcome. Hey, thanks. I yeah. love being here. Yeah, thanks for being here, man. This is, uh, this is something that we have been talking about a lot in our, our company. We actually... Um, we've been talking about it. We've been implementing some of these things. And then we had a call with our coach, Coach Pipes, um, and uh, he kind of talked about it. And so we just wanted to bring it to the people. Absolutely. So, super excited to do that. So the number one lever that dictates your success in real estate, what is it, Sal? It's your mood. It's mindset. Yeah, it's absolutely your, your, your how you act every single day, how you feel every single day is going to dictate your productivity. Your mood dictates your success. Absolutely. So I say it all the time. If you've listened to me for more than two minutes, you've probably heard me say it. Your mindset is everything. Everything in life starts with mindset. But your mindset helps with your mood. And I think just using that in a different way to frame it is so important. So as an example, if you're happier, by default, you're going to make more money. Yes. You're going to have better days. You're going to be more productive. When you're more productive, you make more money. When you're more productive, you help more people. And so I think a lot of times we focus on productivity first, but sometimes we got to take care of ourselves. It goes to, um, I just flew to Phoenix for an event and every single time I get on an airplane, they tell me the same thing. It's in case of emergency, take care of yourself before you take care of others. And too many times I think we forget to take care of ourselves and our mood impacts our relationships, impacts our business, impacts our success, impacts so many things in our life. And we have to make sure we take care of our mood and we are aware and conscious of our mood. So we're going to unpack that. Um, we've got a lot of great detail to go into, some science behind it, some practical things, and then ultimately how that affects your business and real estate. So let's dive in. Where you guys want to start? Yeah, uh, I'll chime in here from the, the background. The idea behind this is when we say mood, improve how you're feeling, um, mood can be broken down into so many different parts. And we've broken it down into the three with emotions, feelings, and then mood. Yep. And very briefly, emotions are brief events that happen in your life. Feelings are how you feel or think about those events. And then mood is your long-term overall um, state of mind, I guess. I would but, even be willing to say that um, your feelings are a result of your emotions. Mm-hmm. And then your mood is a result of your feelings and your emotions. Yes. Right. They so all it's work cause together. And effect, right. And 100%. so I think sometimes we talk about like our mood, but what causes our mood? Mm -hmm. Our emotions cause a lot to do with our mood. How we feel about certain things has to do with our mood, right? Has anyone here had a bad day before? Yeah. One or two. <laughs> right. So we've all had bad days. We've all had good days. We've all had great days. We've all have that. But if you break that really down, it probably start with a feeling somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we talk about emotions and we always try to say like, don't make decisions based off of your emotions, yep. you know, because it is that initial knee jerk reaction where if you are, <laughs> if you, if you are quick off the tongue, what you say, once it's out there, it's out yep. there. Mm -hmm. So, um, also understanding that your emotions, depending on your influence in any organization depending on where you're at where you sit on the hierarchy or how much or how many people are sur you surround yourself with your emotions are contagious yes mm -hmm. you know so we got to be very careful on displaying like, it's okay to be to display your emotions and it's okay to be in that moment but get through it get over it and then mm -hmm. yeah. let's move on well and a note on that your emotions have a chemical change in your brain yep. so if something big happens if someone yelled in your face you're going to have a chemical reaction your body is going to react to that 
being aware of that and being able to say, oh, in this moment, chemicals are shooting through my brain. Is this as big of a deal as it actually is? And that leads into our next part. Matt, you want to dive into feelings. Yeah. So I think, yeah, before we go into feelings, let's talk about emotions just quickly is that, mm -hmm. um, guys, I'm a passionate human being, right? And sometimes that comes with emotion. You can't have passion without emotion, mm -hmm. right? And so I think it's important if you're um, just from my my viewpoint, one of the things I've had to do is be able to control my emotions at a higher level, both good and bad, because I'm passionate, not just in the good stuff, but also in the negative stuff. And that comes across negativity spreads and you don't want to be that person, right? Especially, and I think we're going to tie this to today's real estate market. So stay tuned. But I think like just a little teaser of that is how does negativity of today's marketplace of the interest rates of low inventory of sales being down 40% right now? Like how does that impact your mood? How does that impact your emotions? And how can you overcome that to still be productive despite it? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it all starts with, how, where are your emotions and what are your emotions, what feelings do your emotions lead to? Mm -hmm. Because I will say this in our organization, I love our people. We have a lot of S personality types. And um, for those of you who know the DISC personality test, S personality types are the emotional ones. And they always start every single statement with, I feel like. Um, and um, sometimes feelings are important and sometimes feelings don't matter. I'm just be, be honest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, sometimes the world doesn't care about your feelings. But also, I think how you feel is very, very relevant for your mood, for your emotions, for your success. And so it is very, very important how our emotions make us feel, right? I think that there's a big correlation there that we can understand. It's And it's also like, let's say we feel like the market is down. We feel like, let me give you a real life example. Feelings aren't truth. Let me say that. Feelings are not truth. I was at this event, this mastermind in Phoenix, and someone posed the question, um, and I love these people that try to stump the speaker, right? I love it. Um, it just, it really excites me. Um, but anyway, this was one of those people, and they said, well, I, I hear you, but it just doesn't make sense for anybody to sell their home right now if they have a 2.5% interest rate. Oh, okay. I completely understand what you're saying. And I said, let me ask you a question. Is that your truth or is that the truth? Mm -hmm. She said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, how, can, how could you convince someone to sell their house at 2.5% interest rate? I said, whoa, I never said I was convincing anyone. I just said that there are people doing it every day. And you don't know their situation. So don't let your truth, your feelings of how you think your negative mindset affect their decision making. Mm -hmm. Because as an example, what if that person had a death in the family? The person that owned the house died. Does the interest rate matter? Are they still going to sell that house? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, they are. Yeah. Right? Like, so there's, and there's six D's of people, why people buy real estate, by the way. Let me see if I can remember them all. There's death. There's divorce, there's diamonds or marriage, there's downsizing, there's diapers, so you have a new kid, a baby, and number six is my favorite, it's the job, right? So if those are the reasons that people move. Regardless of what's going on in the marketplace, there's people move, moving, there's people that are selling, there's people that are buying. It's happening each and every day. And so we have to be careful of letting how we feel, how other people's emotions or our emotions impact our judgment of a situation and we're like well it just doesn't make sense for anyone to sell i might as well just give up no that's the wrong mindset to have get get your truth your feelings out of your way of helping other people because if people are going through one of those six d's sometimes the interest rate doesn't matter mm -hmm. and also i think that there is a great case that i made in front of the room of why people should still buy even in that scenario because home values are increasing each and every day they can always refinance later it's a whole nother conversation for another day, but we have to be careful not to let our emotions and our feelings dictate other preventing other people from doing things that we know are in their best interest or allowing that to prevent us from doing productive actions. Yeah, 100%. You know, we, funny that you you mentioned the job. You know, we, yeah. just, we just happen to be in... Um, in a community that uh, is right next to a military installation where people have to move every two to three years, yep. right? And so when we start talking about what that particular individual's feelings are about the current market, there is always opportunity. And so when we brief the facts about the market, 
the facts about the market and then the opportunity where, you know, for instance, sure, you're going to have to pay a little bit more in interest now, but when the market gets crazy, you know, when we talk about, you know, in our meetings, you're going to be paying more for it later, yep. you know, so now you can get the house you want versus being competitive in that market. With so here's a, here's a mindset shift yeah. just on this conversation. Which is more, which is, which is greater. Let's do a math equation. Let's have a yeah. math class here. This is like high level math. Not really. This is basic math. Which one is more the, the home price or the monthly payment? Right. So why are you buying based upon what the interest rates are doing with the monthly payment versus what the overall home price is? The monthly payment, how many, in, how, how many months are in 30 years? 300 no 360 yeah 360 so there's three you're making decisions based on one 360th of the overall equation stop it it doesn't make sense there's a bigger picture look at the bigger picture what are home values doing they're increasing anyway that's my that's my rant for sure that. but it, so quick math so i and i don't know what the the numbers are but let's say how many so in one particular moment right you have something drives you into an emotional state yep right like and, that rant of mine right and right. Well, so for instance <laughs> so there are like 24,600 seconds in a day right and that one moment that drives you into an emotional state you're going to let that dictate yep. the the mm -hmm. other 24,598,000 seconds that you have in a day no yep, yep. You know, so it, it, it's just amazing how that emotion, you know, your emotions can drive your mood. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to add a, a quick hack. This is something that I use is I have the five minute rule or the 24 hour. Rule. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I implemented these and am I perfect? Nope. But maybe you can take it from from me and you can you can at least improve because it's helped me improve my five minute rule. If I am in a heated situation, I'm mad, I'm I'm fired up about something. I give it five minutes. I completely walk away. I come back. If I'm still upset at that same level or more, I give it 24 hours before I respond. If I'm, if I've decreased from that five minutes, all right, we can discuss. Does that make sense? Versus that instant reaction. Because how many times have we done that instant knee jerk reaction? Be like, oh shit, shouldn't have done that. Yep. Wish I wouldn't have. Well, once you do it, you can't take it back. No. Right. And so I just think it's important that you understand that that affects all aspects of life. Right. Um, but when we're talking about feelings and emotions, I think that that's relevant. Colin, what's, what's your take? Yeah, no, I mean, all of these things work together in, in and of itself and emotions, an emotional response that you had, again, a chemical reaction to outside uh, stimulus that happened years ago. Let's say that, that you had a mm. negative experience selling a house. Then your thoughts on that are forever ingrained Dude. that you say, well, from now on, selling a house is That's always so going to be bad. And then that turns into your overall mood around selling homes. So it's, it creates this snowball effect that if you're aware of it, and not just for yourself, but for the people that we're serving, say, okay, do they have an unfair bias on this? Do they have one bad emotional yes. event that has now completely changed it? Let's shift that. What if we can make this the best emotional response they've ever had and flip that? Dude, that's so good. That goes back to the truth or your truth. Yes. Right? Is because like, let's use this, um, the example of a two and a half percent seller, right? I think that's relevant for a real estate podcast, right? Why would they sell? Well, just because you talk to one person that made a great point of it doesn't make sense for me in my situation, doesn't mean there aren't situations that make sense to sell. Or just because you had that one experience or that one person you tried to convince and they yelled at you doesn't mean there's not other people you can't help by having the same conversation. And so I think what you said is that it's the it, there's sometimes we react emotionally based upon history. Something that happened five years ago. Something happened 10 years ago. And we instantly react based upon how that happened then versus how it happens now. And I think we have to be careful not to let that affect our decisions now. I think that's, dude, there's so much there. That's so good. 100%. Consider, consider our profession that we do, right? We're servants in our community. Yep. So our moods, our feelings, our emotions, what, if we're out there trying to serve our community in the, in the platform of real estate, if we're in a bad mood or we have a bad experience mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be briefing the facts and advising yep. based off of our expert professional opinions mm -hmm. 
if we're in a bad mood or we had a bad experience and we're telling or that we to our clients. we have a negative clients, mindset. Right, absolutely. A negative mindset, then that's going to translate over to that, that potential client. And then word of mouth is the greatest thing that we have here. That client is now going to tell their friends. Their friends are going to tell their friends. Mm-hmm. Now we're just a bunch of yep. negative Nancys <laughs> running around trying to sell real estate or not sell real estate. Well, nobody them. wants to be around negative people, no. right? Like, so also don't be overly optimistic either. Sure. There's, a, there's a balance. <laughs> like, I don't believe in participation trophies and all that bullshit, right? But at the same time, just being negative to be negative is there's two sides to every coin. And how you look at it matters and be optimistic, right? Sure. Don't be a pessimist. Um, let's talk about mood. Let's get to the third point. Well, and actually, then, before we, yep, we jump in, the last thing I was going to say about feelings is remember that feelings are not always true. Yes. Just because we feel something yep. does not mean that was the case. For example, again, on the emotional That's a way more well. eloquent way of saying that sometimes the world don't give a shit about your feelings. That's how <laughs> I said it. Well, but also that you maybe misread a situation entirely. If I come in at the office and say, good morning, Matt, and Matt shrugs me off and doesn't say anything, and then I think about that and I go, Matt must hate me right now. Yeah. Matt must be like this. And then, and then I let that snowball into my mood around Matt. And they're like, what do you think of Matt Smith? I'm like, you know, to be honest, he's always kind of grumpy. Turn back to that day, he didn't hear me. You know, like, it, it's, and it was like, oh. So know that uh, to look at your feelings, you say, how do I feel right now? Especially if you're having that emotional surge, just go, my feelings can be distorted or inaccurate just because this is I believe this uh, is happening to me doesn't mean it's true and doesn't even mean it's valid. Sometimes you can just have a brief feeling that you go, just dismiss it. Yep. It's not worth snowballing about. Some are. And I'm going to say it again because it's so relevant to exa- that exact point you made. Just because it's your truth doesn't mean it's the truth. Yes. it's your. It could be your feelings, mm-hmm. not the truth. There's a difference. 100%. All right, last one there then is mood, um, which is honestly your mindset. It's your state of mind that you've been building over time because of these emotional events, because of the way that you're feeling slash thinking about them. Um, So this state of mind is a general feeling that can influence your thoughts, your behavior, and your actions. So overall, let's use the gym as an example. If you kind of keep having negative experience with the gym, if every time you think about working out, you're like, nah, not, not for me then overall you're going to have a negative aptitude towards yep. working out and that's going to build and the opposite is true if you go and you work out with a friend you're like hey that was kind of good it starts to snowball and it becomes part of your mood well i think um let's use let's go a little deeper on that right and so let's say that you go to the gym and you and you're um you're like like i was um and overweight and unhappy with how you look and your health mm-hmm. and fitness there's two ways to look at it you can go to the gym and be like damn it i'm still out of shape or you can say Hell yeah, today I made progress. Yes. Which one of those are most likely to serve you in your mood to come back to actually reach the goal that you went there the first place for? Mm -hmm. But how many people look at it and look at it as like, damn it, I did 30 minutes on the treadmill. How come I haven't lost 30 pounds? Right? Like, and then we let that dict that mood dictate us and give us an excuse Mm -hmm. is what it really does. Um, It gives us an excuse to not go back to the gym. Right. Well, then that affects your emotional response yes. whenever you see a gym, uh, either positively or negatively. And overall, uh, again, mood is encapsulating the emotions, the feelings, but other things like diet, your health, the people you surround yourself, your environment, and how you're choosing to think. But that's kind of breaking down all three of those yep. as when you think about how do I feel right now? How's my mood? What are my thoughts? They all encapsulate so many different factors, but being aware of what those factors are, are going to be able to help you make objective uh, decisions instead of letting your emotions control you. Yeah. If your emotions control your decisions, we all know those people, right? And we all, maybe it's just me. I'm assuming we all know those people. And like, those are just not people that, um, we really look up to at role models most of the times, right? If they, they wear their emotions on their sleeves and every decision is an emotional decision, their emotional roller coaster. Like, yes, you got to have emotions, you got to have passion, but you also got to be able to keep it in check. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and Colin, you said a word there that really stood out to me and I want you guys to really fine tune and listen to this. You get to choose Mm -hmm. your mood. Yep. Your mood is a choice. No one else dictates your mood except for you. You get to choose how you feel about your emotions, which dictates your mood. That means your mood is your choice. 100%. You know, you talk about your choice. You have all these outside factors, you, the, the environment, your diet, your physical state, but you get to choose your mood every single day, mm-hmm. you know? And so there are things where people do 
in order to maybe get themselves into that mood, that mindset. David Goggins talks about his accountability mirror that he goes in yep. front to in front of every single day. Right. And I know that Matt has a mirror that he looks in and we all have that, that, that way of trying to make that decision. We have clarity breaks to, to help us focus on our mindset. So that way we can choose the mood because when we walk through those doors and we know that the positions that we are in or the influence that we have in the environment that we currently serve in will dictate everyone else's mood. Yep. Because they will choose to follow. Yep. Right. And so for for us in the room, the people that talk to us every single day, if you choose to be in a bad mood, understand that there are secondary and tertiary effects for your decision. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it is your freaking choice. Yes. Like, like we've all heard this statement before and we all agree with it. Life is all about the choices you made. Yeah. Here's something I want you to think about further in depth on that. Not making a choice is still a choice. Yeah. Choosing not to choose is a choice. So life is all about choices. You are exactly where you should be based upon the choices you have or have not made in your life, period. Mm -hmm. And if you first, first step is accepting that responsibility. But that starts with something as simple as, am I in a good mood or a bad mood? It is your freaking choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of choice, that kind of transitions to our next part on um, the different things that do impact the mood um, and things that you can choose to have more of, less of, or change. Sal, do you want to jump into that next piece? Absolutely. So when we talk about like um, your external factors, right, what, what are some of those external factors that can influence um, your decision making, mm-hmm. right? And so we can talk about the, the people that you surround yourself with, the, the music that you listen to, the, the things that you watch on TV, news, just all of these things can always dictate your mood or dictate your decision to choose what mood you're yep. going to be in then that day. Like how many people, and this is my, this is my chance to dig at mainstream media, right? How many people watch the news and are in a bad mood after watching the news? Yeah. Quit watching the damn news. Yep. It is nothing but negative mind fuckery that they're trying to convince you to think about what they want you to think about. And they're painting the picture how they want you to paint so that you'll follow them no matter which side of the aisle you're on. This is not a political statement. This is an anti-political statement. Quit fucking following politics. Quit following the news and live your own damn life. You want to be in a better mood? Quit letting outside factors like that dictate it. Absolutely. Now, it doesn't say, it does not mean that you can't get pissed off. Yes. And it doesn't mean that you can't be happy. And it doesn't mean that you can't be sad. Be that. Be in that moment and then make a choice. Is that going to dictate the mood that I'm going to be in for the remainder of the day or for the week, the month? Your choice completely. But if we continue to allow outside factors dictate our mood, then we're not in control. Mm -hmm. You're in control of your life. You're in control of your choices. There's nobody here that is going to make your choice for you unless you allow it. Yep. You you said something brilliant uh, earlier that I want to highlight. You said people influence. These outside forces influence. Your radio influences. They do not decide and do not let yourself become a victim of those environments that you're like, well, this person was negative, so therefore I didn't have a choice. Or this thing happened to me, so I don't have a choice. It influences you, but at the end of the day, you are responsible for how you respond to it. I think that's too, like, yes, influence versus decision. Mm-hmm. There's influencing factors in your life that, you, like you've heard me say it before, you are who you hang around. Yeah. Right. And so that is an influence. Your environment is an influence. Your um, what you feed your mind is an influence. Um, what you feed your body is an influence. The workout you choose to do or not to do is an. There's so many influences, but that's not the decision. And I think it's so important that we separate those two. Now, do you want to be around things that influence you in a positive manner? That influence you to be the person you want to be? That influence you to be the best version of yourself? Absolutely. The influences are crucial. But I think it's also crucial that we dis, that we remove the influences from the decision because at the end of the day, it's still choice. Now, let's talk about positive influences that we can have. If you hang around five people that are addicted to drugs, what are you going to become? Yeah. Addicted to drugs. 
Mm-hmm. If you hang around five people that are millionaires, what are you going to become? A millionaire. You hang around five people that are focused every single day, becoming the best version of themselves. They're focusing on being a better mood, better choices, and being the best version of themselves every single day. What are you going to be? You're going to be the sixth that's trying to be the best version of yourself each and every day. So your influence matters, but you also have a choice of what mood are you in and are you adding to those people? Because if I'll tell you right now, I am fortunate to be in some rooms of some of the elite, elite, elite performers in real estate. Elite. Like I'm the small fish in a huge pond. And I absolutely love it and it scares me to death at the same time. But I also know that if I'm going to influence that environment, I've got to bring my best and my positivity. And if I bring that room down and I bring my negative bullshit and my whiny and any any excuses to that environment, I'm no longer going to be invited to that environment. And so it's not just like, hey, you got to find that people. You got to find those people. You have to influence those people with your influence. So they decide to keep you in that circle so you can become that sixth person in that circle. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And then take it for for here at Matt Smith Real Estate Group. Yep. You know, the 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 influence that you have on this organization. When you go in and you have a conversation, when we have a uh, a lunch and learn, a sales meeting, um, whatever, uh, uh, a mastermind, the mood that you are in will dictate everyone else. Yep. Because they're they have chose to be in that room to listen. Yep. And if you're in a shitty mood. You know, what are they going to get out of it? They're going to be shitty, you know? And so here in real estate, we started talking about numbers earlier in this podcast. And we talked about the downside of what the market is in. You can choose to see it in in a negative way, or you can choose to see the opportunities Mm -hmm. in the market and be able to be 100% productive in today's market. Yes. And we're showing it. We're 100% showing it. Are there challenges in today's marketplace? Yup. Hell yeah. Uh, everywhere. And is there negativity? Hell yeah. Go look for it. You'll find it. But all of those are opportunities. They're just disguised as challenges. They're disguised as negativity. They're disguised as problems. But I choose to be in the mood of those are opportunities, not challenges. Without challenges, we don't have opportunity for growth. And I think... Again, what is your mindset around these things? What is your mood? Are, and do, do I have bad days? Sure. Do I fuck shit up every day? Sure. But I'm working on getting better every single day and being a better mood because my influence that I have around my people, my Matt Smith real estate group family, my real estate family, my actual family matters. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that you have, you make smart choices with the influence that you have in the circles that you're in. And also you choose to be in the circles that are that right influence for you. Mm -hmm. How many people in this market choose to go to an environment that's more quote unquote comfortable versus one that's uncomfortable and suited for growth? Mm -hmm. I think there's a big difference right now. What, and if I were to say, let's put two avatars in front of ourselves here as an example, we have one person that is, they're focused on being I just want to be comfortable. I want to find things that make me feel good. I want to find things that um, that just I just I maybe don't have to work so hard. I just but I feel good, right? This false positivity, right? Or we have people that you know what? It's a struggle, but we're working on this together. We're improving each and every day, and I force myself to do something hard so I can be a better version of myself and I can make the most out of these challenges because I see them as opportunities because of my circle. Which one of those two are going to win in this marketplace? Yeah, right. Right? Like, it's simple. It is so simple, but it's a choice. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be comfortable or do you want to win? Mm-hmm. I mean, which one do you want? Absolutely. If you want to be comfortable, go get a real J-O-B. The real estate market, real estate business is never comfortable. This last three years of real estate have not been real estate. No. That's not what real estate is. That's not what sales is. Real estate is not supposed to be comfortable. And if you're looking for something to be comfortable... Like you're not looking for growth and maybe there's nothing wrong with being satisfied with where you are. That's not what I'm saying, but you also still need to realize that if you get satisfied and you stay the same, the world is passing you by. So by default, you are getting better or worse. That's what I truly believe. And you are either, if you were staying steady and you're like, you know what? I learned how to make hundred thousand dollars a year. That's all I want to make. Does that $100,000 with inflation, does that $100,000 get you more or less each and every year? 
Less. Less. Are mm-hmm. more people making more money than you each and every year? Yes. So your $100,000 is no longer $100,000 because the world is passing you by and others are passing you by. So why you are staying comfortable, you are not staying the same. Mm-hmm. By default, especially when they're printing money left and right and all this craziness going on in the world, if you let's use money as an example. If you want to stay making $100,000, you're going to have to grow it 8% or 10% or whatever inflation percentage is to keep that $100,000. Mm-hmm. You hear, go talk to um, anybody that's over 60 years old and ask them if a million dollars today is the same that it was when they were a kid. Yeah. Not even close. Not even close. It's yeah. not the same. It's the same number. It's not the same impact. Absolutely. And so if someone had to dream whenever, if there's a 60, here's what I would be willing to bet because I've talked to them. Someone that's on the retirement age and they had a dream when they were building their business, building their life, that if we have a million dollars, we can retire. You ask them right now, can they retire on a million dollars? They will laugh in your face nope. because they realize that that's no longer the target because it changes. So you can't stay stagnant. If you get stagnant, you are by default getting worse. Absolutely. So when we talk about the environment, every day, you know, we talk about trying to be 1% better every single day, right? So Matt, you talked about, do you want to be in a place where your standards are not raised, yep. that you are in a place where um, you can do the minimum, yep. you know, you can do where nobody's going to push you to be a better version of yourself, or you can be in an environment where you are pushed because the potential is there and we will raise the standards. We will continually raise the bar because once you reach that standard, we raise the bar. That is mm-hmm. your goal now becomes your new standard. We raise it now. We can go more. We can go more. And that is your choice. You can choose to be involved in that or not. Yep. Mm-hmm. And when you do choose to that, is there going to be struggles? Is there going to be pain? Is there, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But in those moments of struggle, in those moments of pain, you find that your, your capacity to do more, be more, is there and that is where the inspiration that's where it lies right yep. there and 100%. you just become better every single day that's the environment that i want to be in and that's all based off of mindset yes. where i choose to be 100 dude so spot on so let me give you guys some insight some uh, behind the curtains of some rooms that i've been fortunate to be in and there's two takeaways i want you guys to have of top teams that are winning in today's marketplace. When I say winning, the, even though all the markets are down substantially, and these markets are no exception, the, each of these markets were down 30% or more, and they are up year over year. Meaning, so they are beating their market by more than 30% in today's times. There are two things that all of them have in common that is helping them win at that level. Number one, they are enforcing their standards or increasing their standards. There's two different things. Don't go try to increase your standards if you're not enforcing the current ones, right? right? So make sure you enforce the standards that you have in place. And the second thing, so Sal talked about standards. Standards are non-negotiable. Standards are a standard. And if you're not enforcing your standards or you don't have standards, it is very, very tough to win when things get hard. And this is, we're talking real estate, but let's talk health and fitness. What are your standards for your diet and nutrition? If you don't track your macros and you don't work out and you don't track what you do, what happens? We wake up one day, we're like, oh shit, where'd those 30 pounds come from? I've been there because I didn't have a standard. Now I have a standard. I'm in the best shape of my life because I have a standard and I'm tracking it each and every day. I'm measuring it and it's non-negotiable for me. I highly recommend that you guys really look in the mirror. Again, find that David Goggins accountability mirror. Mm -hmm. And do I really want to become the best version of myself? Does that mean that you have to be the the David Goggins version of yourself? That's not what I'm saying. It is you versus you. And you develop your own standards, but you have to have standards first and foremost, and then enforce them for yourself, for other people. The second part of that is you have to be willing to be held accountable at an extremely high level. These people, these teams are running into accountability versus running away from it. So do you have standards? Are you enforcing them? And are you willing to be held accountable at a high level for those standards? That's the secret to success in today's market. sounds simple. It is, but it's not easy. And so as an example, 
you talked about um, an environment of wanting people to be better, growing, finding the best version of themselves. I totally agree. But I think there's a nuance that you left out for the audience that I want to make sure is, is clear. And I know you understand this. I just want to explain it in greater detail. Is those standards are their standards, not ours. And so on our team, they set their goals, their commitments, and it is their standard. It is their plan. And then we help them enforce that and hold them accountable to it. It's not like we are saying, hey, Colin, you got it. You're producing 10 videos a day. You got to do 15 now. Mm -hmm. No, we have the conversation. Colin, how are you feeling with the 10? Do you want to do more? Awesome. What would it take for you to do more? Let's build out a plan. What would that plan look mm -hmm. like? Awesome. Is that something you could do each and every day? Would you be willing to let me hold you yeah. accountable to that so you can get better? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right? Like that's a, it's a very simple version. But now Colin wants to do 12 videos a day. Mm -hmm. And it is my responsibility as the leader to hold him accountable to it. Because he said that's what he wanted. And he told me why he wanted it. You want to win? There's your, there's your recipe. 100%. Some great stuff there. Uh, want to transition into, I guess, relationships there? <laughs> yeah. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Matt we're took on, us off track again. Where do we go? We're on a roll. No. Uh, well, I think the, the next part is how your mood impacts your relationships, which impacts your mood. Uh, Sal, do you want to lead this one? Sure. So when we talk about your mood and we talked about the people that you surround yourself with um your relationships every day so people will everybody's a sponge in in today's society and your mood can influence a relationship every single day so the relationship that you have in your personal life your professional life um your spiritual life um the relationship that you have with yourself yep. let's start with that one your relationship with your own self if you are in at war with yourself every and you struggle every single day, then maybe we got to start there before we can start the influence of others. You got you got to start yourself first. It's so good, Colin. You just gave me a great birthday gift. What book did you just buy me? Oh, the it's called the Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. It's the one that if you listen to this podcast, I always misquote because I don't remember what it's called. I will remember it now. <laughs> the, the but Colin, frog. what? Um, how does that book relate to what Sal was just saying? It, it's it's the quote that we go over um, on a regular basis. Um, is that if you're struggling with everything that is around you, if the world feels overwhelming. Um, there, there's a quote in it that says, uh, I believe the boy says, I, I, I don't know where to go next. Yep. They're in the middle of the forest. They're in the middle of the woods. And he's, the horse talks in the story. Yeah. And he talks to the horse and says, I don't know where to go. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And he's panicking. Mm -hmm. And the horse says, he's like, I can't see my way out of the forest is what the boy says. And the horse says, well, can you see your next step? And the boy says, yes, I can. The horse says, well, just take that. Mm -hmm. Just take the next step. And I think what Sal is saying is that sometimes you can listen to this and you can misinterpret this message because everyone's dealing with something. And yep. I think that's this is such a great point. Yeah. And if you are dealing with something, you have your own internal struggles, you're struggling yourself, we sympathize for you. We have empathy for that. I get it. I understand. Mm -hmm. And you got to take care of you first. But sometimes you have, and we are here to help and support, but there's also a level of you have to fight those demons yeah. first mm -hmm. before you can come out and help other people. If you don't, again, oxygen mask first. You mm -hmm. have to take care of yourself so you can take care of other people. Well, and when you do that, and that transitions perfectly here, it, you're going to be happier. Yes. And when you're happier, you make more money, you help more, change more lives, and overall, your life improves tenfold. Yep. Absolutely. So when we talk about progress, right? We talk about progress. So if you can run, run. If you have to walk, walk. If you've got to crawl, crawl. Just move forward yep don't stand still and don't go backwards just move forward dude yeah 100 percent. as soon as you started saying i'm like oh i hope he says this and that's exactly what i was thinking dude that's that's there's too many people that compare themselves to other people yeah. comparison is the thief of joy yeah 100 percent. quit comparing yourself to other people do you want joy in your life do you want happiness stop comparing yourself to other people Comparison is important, but it's you versus you. Am I 1% better today than I was yesterday? And run your own race. It is you versus you and keep moving forward. Yeah. And are you going to have days where you move backwards? Sure. But guess what? Get back up, wipe yourself off, and take that next step forward. Keep Absolutely. moving. It's an so it's, it's an endless game. There's no, there's no end to it. Dude, you know? Yes. So you've got to, like, it's not about trying to win 
Like there's nothing to win. So like win the moment. If it's a, if in real estate, if it's a phone call, win that call. Yep. If it is, you know, if, if it's at the gym, it is get this set, win this set, win the moment. Mm-hmm. If that's all you, if that's as far as you can see, yep. win that moment and then go to the next one, yep. win that one. Are you going to lose some moments? Great. Will that dictate your mood for the remainder of the day, month, year? Don't let it. Just win that moment. Brush it off if you lose the moment. Win the next one. Dude, yeah, so good. There's so many directions I could go, but let's let's go real estate specific. Here's an example that I use all the time because agents are like, well, this one seller yelled at me or this one person hung up on me when I was making a f- phone call or I went on this appointment and it was terrible. I'm like, all right, and what? Did, how did that make you feel? Right? Right. We're going into the mood. And that made me feel like, well, I didn't want to make any more phone calls. And I just stopped my prospecting because of that. Or I don't want to go on any more appointments or whatever, right? Because they let that one thing influence the rest of their potential and their success. And so here's the mind hack that I try to instill into others is when someone hangs up on me, I mark it down on my prospecting sheet and I circle it. I draw a smiley face next to it. I'm like, let me see how many more hangups I can get today. Right. I want some more hangups. The more hang, the more no's I get, the closer I am to the next yes. There's one, got it out of the way, awesome. Two more no's, guess what? I'm gonna get that yes. Absolutely, they're called defining moments. Yes, you can either define the moment, or the moment will define you. Yep, hundred percent. And it's it's all about choice. Yep. Right. And so, and I think it's it's not perfection, it's progress. Yeah. It is realizing that if you want to be better, you want success in your life, you want to be productive, you want to make more money, you want to help more people. You have to realize that it all comes down to the choices that you make in these little itty bitty choices, these moods, these feelings, these emotions that you have dictate all of that. And it's in our control. Yeah. Well, I know we're getting uh, towards the end of the episode here. Let's talk about some tools and strategies for uh, being able to implement, uh, improve your mood, uh, kind of putting that gas mask on yourself and how you can also uh, impact your uh, company culture with this. Yeah, so I think some tools, first and foremost, um, I highly recommend this tool only if you're a committed individual that wants to be the best version of yourself. If you are a committed individual that wants to be the best version of yourself in 75 days, I can help you find it. 75 hard. Go listen to our episode in the feed on that. That can transform your life mentally, physically, emotionally, etc. Those defining moments Sal talked about, I call them pivot points. It taught me those pivotal moments as soon as you have that negative thought that comes in your mind, instantly go do it right now. Oh, I don't want to make that call. I'm making that call. Oh, I don't want to wake up. I'm waking up. Oh, I don't want to go to the gym. Time to go to the gym. Right? Like, and if you do that in an instant and you train your mind, I'm no longer letting you control my actions. I'm in control. Imagine how your life is if you were, whatever you said you were going to do, you kept the promises you made to yourself. How much more confidence would you have in yourself? How much better would your mood be? You want to transform your life in 75 days, go listen to that episode and then go do it. But you better be committed. Don't half-ass it. Um, So there's a tool. What else you got, Colin? Well, we've got uh, three general uh, categories. We've got mindset, health, and environment. All three of these will contribute to your overall mood. There's many other things, but with mindset, we've talked about- So 75 hard covers mindset and health. 100%. Right? Yeah. It's just like immediately checks those off. Um, And then we talked about environment as well. But with that, you have the power of who you allow into your life. And that includes family and friends and coworkers. So knowing who you're surrounding yourself with, with what you were talking about earlier on, on if you surround yourself with five druggies, you'll become the sixth. If you surround yourself with five millionaires, you'll become the sixth. So who are you surrounding yourself? What influences are you allowing? Because you can change that. So look at your environment and say, how is this impacting me? Because it is. And you're lying to yourself if you believe anything else. One of the things that uh, Matt talked about, 75 hard, and I want to dive real quick about yourself first. You got to be honest with yourself first. You know, I think too many people lie to themselves and they don't, oh, yeah. you know, they, they, they justify their actions with a lie and they really, they really can't admit their true faults and their true, like, mm-hmm. What is preventing them from yep. the the next step? You know, there is there is one step between failure and success, and people will lie to themselves 
because there's a sacrifice that needs to be made that they're not willing to 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 dedicate themselves to it you know and so you got you got to be honest with yourself first once you break down that honesty and, and truthfully admit like hey you know i'm 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 lazy you know i i'm fat i'm i i overeat you know whatever it is break that down be honest with yourself and then Start the journey. Yep. Mm-hmm. Take I, the first step. That, that is so, I just had an epiphany moment. It can be easy to look at this and just kind of go, well, this all sounds like mushy-gushy emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, how is this going to incorporate to my you business? You haven't listened to this podcast look, long if that's what you think this <laughs> yeah. is. Look at the top performers on our team. Yep. All of them have improved their lives tenfold. They weren't before. They weren't making very much money. And then what did they do? They started uh, changing their mindset. They started improving their fitness. They started changing their social circles. Circles. The top pe- performers on our team that are making the most money, that are changing the most lives, have changed their own life first. And when you look at them yep. physically, and everything about their life screams that they have improved things tenfold, and that they are happier individuals because they've elevated their move. Dude, it's yeah, proof's in the pudding, right? Mm-hmm. Like you look around, and I'm glad you had that epiphany. Like that's so true and I like I get to see that each and every day and that passion that you just had I love it that's what motivates me every single day and I realize though that a lot of people look at it and they're like well once I become successful then I'll do this mm-hmm. you have to do this first and then you become successful yep. I think yep. success is an internal job yeah it's don't wait on external factors for this productivity fairy to come sprinkle productivity dust on you or this money fairy to show up and put money in your bank account you have to become and act as if you are that person before you become that person dude you sal you said there's a couple things i want to hit on is you talked about sacrifice and i think the sacrifice is misused and thrown around a lot a lot of people think that sacrifice is optional I don't believe sacrifice is optional. I believe sacrifice is required. And whether you want it or not, you have sacrifice in your life. You either sacrifice for the things that you want or the things that you want, your dreams, your hopes, your desires, those become the sacrifice. You have the choice. I'm going to make the sacrifices that I need to make to accomplish my goals, my commitments, my dreams, my hopes, my desires, or I'm sacrificing all of my hopes, my dreams, and desires because I'm not willing to take the actions that I know it's going to take to get there. That is your choice. So you don't get to choose if you have sacrifice in your life. You get to choose which sacrifice you have. I think it's so important. There's like it's people think that, well, I don't I don't really want to have sacrifice things. Right. Well, then you're not going to get what you want. Like it's just not an option. Like I hope it doesn't sound too harsh. It's just reality. It's truth. And now, does that mean that you can't make sacrifices along the way on some of your goals and they change? Of course. But I think life becomes so much more worth living when you choose the outcomes because you realize you're in control. Yeah. Too many people are, are victims and think, well, when this, again, the success fairy comes and sprinkles this success dust on me, then it'll be my time. It's meant to be. It's meant to be. No, if it's meant to be, go work for it and you'll get it. Yeah. I call that delusional entitlements. <laughs> yeah, we could have a whole yeah. episode on that. A whole other podcast on that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, let's keep this one positive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Before we close out, um, uh, Sal, do you want to talk briefly about just how to implement this in your culture? Sure, absolutely. So understand that the people that you uh, surround yourself with, the people that you are that you uh, talk to every single day, they're, the culture that we have in this organization is truly based off of our mindset, yep. how we are. Um, how we, what we bring to the table every single day. Now we are a servant culture. Like we, we believe in giving back, you know, we contribute, we have core values, you know, and this, all of the things that we have in our, that are written down black and white, they are not just rules. They are, they are lifestyles. They are who we are. They are the true definition of what we truly believe in every single day. And that dictates our culture. And it is not one person. I am not the culture. Matt is not the culture. Colin is not the culture. But together, we 100% are a part of the culture. It is our culture. Yes. It is not mine. It is not Sal's. It's not Colin's. It is ours. And I think it is a beautiful thing. Culture is a buzzword. It's thrown around. I hate it. I think it's misused in a lot of scenarios. But how do you feel when you're in your environment? Do you feel inspired? Do you feel empowered? 
Do you feel like these people are helping me become the best version of myself? These people are making a difference in the world. These di people are making a difference in my world. If you don't say yes to those, you may not be in a culture that's fit for you. Mm -hmm. It could be the culture or it could be you. Either way, it's maybe not a good fit. I think it's, imp and again, we all have bad days. So don't let a bad day go, don't go quit your job after having a bad day. But I think it's important that you realize you influence your culture. And I think one of the things that we have really um, strived to do over the years and continue to is to empower people to have ownership. It is their culture. And if you see something you don't like in your culture, it is also your responsibility to help fix it. Absolutely. Yeah, right? Culture and polices. It's, culture polices itself. Yeah. 100%. And we've had people that have self-selected mm -hmm. out of the culture because they realized it wasn't for them, wasn't a good fit, and kudos to them, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking for people who are looking for us, and we're not for everyone. But if you want to grow, you want to become the best version of yourself, you want to have an impact on the world, you want to have an impact on your world, we're looking for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's I think that that's how you continue to improve the culture because just like I was talking about you cannot stay stagnant. I don't believe a culture can stay stagnant. A workplace can't stay stagnant. It is getting better or worse each and every day. And it's up to everyone in that environment to protect, not just protect like, oh, we're going to shield this. No, you protect it, but you also grow it yes. at the same time. And I think it's so important. Um, there's a couple of things that I think are important. Number one, we have a no gossip policy. Gossip kills culture. Definition of gossip, talking about someone to someone who can do nothing about it, period. Talking about someone to someone who can do nothing about it. If I have a problem with Colin and I'm part of the culture and I, Colin did something I didn't like and I'm going to go talk to someone that is um, working in, works in Colin's office about, hey, did you hear what Colin did? That's gossip. But if I go to Sal, the CEO of the company, and I bring Colin in and say, hey, guys, I have something I want to talk about. There's something, Colin, I observed that you did that I think we can improve upon. That's helping Colin. Mm -hmm. That's helping the culture. And Colin's over shaking his head like, yeah, please do that yes. for me because he's a great culture fit. He wants to be better. He wants to improve. And I think that's so important that we don't participate in gossip. We don't participate in negativity. And are we perfect? Absolutely not. But we help each other. We guide each other and we police our culture to make sure that it's the best environment for all of us. I think another thing too, um, we talked about no negativity, but I think some culture, some workplaces and environment, including ours, can do better at rewarding and recognizing positivity, recognizing culture aspects. As an example, what's the first thing we do for every team meeting? Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we, we honor and we recognize and acknowledge our core value victories yep. every Tuesday meeting. So some team member calls out another team member based upon a positive attribute that they did based upon a core value. Like it's instilled. It's not just written on the walls. What's the first document we give everybody when they're hired? Mission statement and the core values. Yeah. And are they required to sign that? Yes. That's the most important contract that we have in this organization. Yep. Is you believe in, you understand, and you will abide by these. First and foremost. Absolutely. And our core value is just one little statement? No. <laughs> There's paragraphs written about what they are, what how they impact us, and how we expect you to abide by them. Absolutely. And our I, yeah. What we what we expect is that our culture evolves, not dissolves. Yes. You know, and so and these 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 documents are um, a commitment and a partnership. Yep. That partnership is a way better word. I love it. Absolutely. So they we are partnering with them to evolve our culture and our environment. Yep. Good stuff. I want to end on this with culture, and I made a post on this the other day. Uh, if you follow, don't follow me on social media, go follow me. Plug. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of posts that I'm making and, and uh, my brain never stops. So, um, if you're up at 2.30 AM, hit me up. I'm probably up too. Um, let's chat, let's mastermind. Um, but that's when most of these post ideas come to me and one came to me and it was about culture and I made two little posts. One of them was talking about, um, the grass is greener where you water it. And the other meme said, well, if you think the grass is greener on the other side, it's probably cause it's fertilized with bullshit. Yeah. Too many people are trying to, instead of accepting responsibility, they're looking for a better solution without, and they're trying to get away from the work and they're trying to get away from how do I look in the mirror to see how I've played part of this problem that's in front of me or this lack of opportunity, whatever it is. And if you look elsewhere for opportunity first, you will always be looking. You have to look internal to find that opportunity. And if you want your grass to be greener, 
do you want your grass to be greener because you watered it or do you want your grass to be greener because it's covered with bullshit i think too many people try to find that magic bullet that magic pill and it just does not exist you have to be around the right people that have the right mood that have the right emotions the right feelings to tie all this back together you have to be part of a culture that it facilitates growth, that believes in the things that you believe in, that are moving in the direction you want to move in, and that support each other, and that are there for growth of individuals each and every day. Cool. Colin, what else you got for us? Anything? I think it's time to wrap up. There's a lot right. of gold here, that's for sure. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, this this podcast is a movement for us to give back to the industry. It's given so much to us, so much to me, so much to my family. And so all that I ask is if you got value from this episode, share it with a friend. We continually see the downloads increasing, so we want to acknowledge you. I thank you guys for following. I thank you guys for the comments. I thank you guys for the feedback that you give me. Truly, it warms my heart, and I appreciate it. It keeps me going to give back. So if you found value, share this with a friend. Also, check out our website, allornothinginrealestate.com. We've got some new resources. We're constantly adding webinars. Our podcasts are there. We have different blogs, different value for free for you there. So go check out our, our, our website. Again, allornothinginrealestate.com. Share this with a friend. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time.